Angular and linear speed are often difficult for students because the formulas look crazy with Greek letters and we get confused. But I wanna go through a few problems and show you how to just look at converting the units instead of being overly concerned with the formulas. So first, in this first problem, we have a Ferris wheel with a diameter of 74 feet and it turns at a rate of one revolution per minute. That's important information. They're asking for the angular speed, excuse me, of the wheel in radians per minute. So that means that when I'm finished with this first part of the problem, we want our fraction to have radians in the numerator and minutes in the denominator. That's gonna be our finished product. So let's start with looking at what we already have. We have one revolution in one minute. So notice first that I already have minutes in the denominator. So we're good. We have the minutes. We need to work on getting radians in the numerator. So that means we need some way to cancel out the revolutions. So let's think about how many radians are in one revolution. There are two pi radians, right? One whole trip around the circle in one revolution. So then we have radians in the numerator, just like we wanted, right there and our revolutions will cancel. So our end product for part A would be two pi radians in one minute. So now let's look at part B. Part B would like the linear speed of a passenger in miles per hour. So again, we're gonna start with what we already know, which is one revolution in one minute. So for this one, we want our end result to be miles on the top, hours on the bottom. So we can certainly cancel out these minutes, correct? Because we need hours down here. So there are 60 minutes in one hour. And when we've done that, our minutes will cancel and we have hours in the denominator, which was our goal. So next, we need to look at getting to the miles here. So we need to cancel this revolutions with some units of measure that will eventually get us to miles. So let's think about one revolution. One revolution would be the circumference, right? If a passenger was on the Ferris wheel, one revolution would cover the circumference of the Ferris wheel. So that would be, let's see, circumference is pi times diameter and the diameter is 74 feet. So we would have 74 pi feet in one revolution. So that gets rid of our revolutions, but now we're looking at feet and we want miles. But they even reminded me here that one mile is 5,280 feet. So then that would cancel out our feet and we would have miles in the numerator. So for the second one here, when I was putting stuff into my calculator, I would have everything in the numerator. So 60 times 74 pi, and that's miles, divided by 5,280, but the only unit that's left is hours. And don't let that freak you out because we canceled a lot of stuff out. Okay, let's look at another one. 
So Saturn has a diameter of 74,900 miles. As the planet rotates, a point on its equator travels at, that shouldn't say A, that should say at, 5,000, I'm sorry, 527,787 miles a day. Find the angular speed of a point on its equator in radians per day. So the information that I'm given here is I know the diameter and I know the number of miles per day it travels. And they're asking me for radians per day. So my answer, I need radians in the numerator and days in the denominator. So let's start with, we know that this guy travels 527,787 miles per day. So we already have the day part, we're good. Now we have to look at the number of radians. So the first thing that we need to do to look at the number of radians is to talk about what happens in one revolution, right? Because we're gonna have um, two pi radians in one revolution. So that's gonna get us the radians in the numerator but next I have to deal with the miles and the revolution. So when we're talking about the distance in a revolution, like a linear distance, what we mean is the circumference that we're traveling, because we're talking about a point on the equator. So our circumference of Saturn would be 74,900 miles, uh, times pi, right? Circumference is pi times diameter. Um, but we're looking at, we need to cancel it with revolutions. So one revolution is 74,900 pi miles. And then if we look, our my, miles cancel, our revolutions cancel, and we're left with radians. So our final product there would be 527787 times 2 pi, and that would be radians in the numerator. And then in the denominator, we would have 74,900 pi, and then that's days. And again, I know that this number doesn't go with days, but remember we're canceling out the units there. Uh, for the second part here, we are looking at the number of rotations per day. So if we want to look at rotations per day, again, we are going to start with what we already know. Let me move up a little bit here. 527787 seven, seven miles per day. Okay, so we have day in the denominator just like we want it. Now we need to think about rotations. So how many miles are in a rotation? Well, one rotation is the same thing as one revolution, right? One rotation is all the way around the circle. So we would have the circumference, which is 74900 pi miles in one rotation. And so then our miles are canceled. And we have rotations in the numerator. So this final product would be 527787 seven, rotations over 74,900 pi days. Okay. Let's look at another one. So we have a cyclist riding a bicycle. The wheels have a diameter of 2.3 feet and they turn at a rate of 290 revolutions per minute. 
So the first thing they're asking us for is the speed of the wheels in radians per minute. So we want radians in the numerator, minutes in the denominator. So we are given 290 revolutions per minute. So the minute part is good. We need to look at the number of radians in one revolution. Um, there are two pi radians in one revolution. And that is always true because remember two pi radians is just that angular distance around the circle. So then my revolutions cancel and we would have 290 times two pi radians per minute. If we want the speed of the cyclist in feet per minute, ooh, I like this pink. So for feet per minute, again, we're going to start with our 290 revolutions per minute. And again, the minutes are already there but we need to look at the number of feet in a revolution. So remember one revolution is the circumference. If the diameter is 2.3 feet, then our circumference is 2.3 pi feet in one revolution. So our revolutions would cancel and we would have 290 times 2.3 pi feet per minute. All right, last one. We have a ceiling fan. The ceiling fan has 19 inch blades, which means that the radius of the fan is 19 inches. And let's see, that's radius. I think the others we've done have been diameter, so we need to be careful. And suppose the linear speed of the tip of the blade is 12 feet per second. The first thing they ask us to do is find the angular speed in radians per minute. So again, our goal is radians in the numerator, minutes in the denominator. We're going to start with what we know, which is that this is traveling 12 feet in one second. So first, let's go ahead and do the seconds to minutes because that's pretty easy, right? We need minutes in the denominator. We need seconds in the numerator, so they'll cancel. And there are 60 seconds in one minute. So now our seconds have canceled and we have minutes in the denominator. So next we need to look at the feet and the radians. So the first thing that we need to remember is that there are two pi radians in one revolution, okay? That hasn't gotten us anywhere yet, but it will because the next thing that we need to do is think about the number of feet in a revolution because we have the radians that we need in the numerator. So feet in a revolution is going to have to do with the circumference, right? So if we're going around the ceiling fan, if the radius is 19 inches, the circumference is 2 pi r, so 38 pi. So we are going to have 38 pi feet in one revolution. And the reason that I knew the feet went in the denominator is I knew they needed to cancel with these and I knew the revolutions needed to cancel. So cancel my feet, cancel my revolutions, and we would have 12 times 60 times two pi divided by 38 pi radians per minute. And I know I wrote this one differently than I wrote the first two that we, that we did, and it doesn't matter. It means the same thing. Then the last one here asks for the number of revolutions per minute. So we want revolutions in the numerator, minutes in the denominator. So again, we're going to start with what we have at the beginning, 
12 feet in one second. And we want minutes, so again, 60 seconds over one minute, and then my seconds will cancel. So next, we need to look at revolutions per minute. So I need to look at how many feet are in one revolution. So let's talk about... Oh goodness, I just realized that I can't, what did I do? Feet, that's inches, not feet. Ugh. Okay, so let's go back here. I'm so sorry. Let's make, let me tell you what, we will start that over. Because I was pretty close. Let's go back down here. And we have 12 feet, that should be 12 inches, I'm sorry, in one second. It looks like my original here was wrong because this says inches and this says feet. No, that's okay. Okay. And so we still have 60 seconds in a minute. And we still have two pi radians in one revolution. And we still have one revolution in 38 pi feet. Oh, but that's 38 pi inches. That's where my mistake was because the radius is 19 inches. So then I need the conversion from inches to feet. So there's 12 inches in one foot. And let's see if that cancels everything out. So seconds, seconds. We want minutes on the bottom. Feet, feet. Revolutions, revolutions, inches, inches, yes. So then that part A, I just had the wrong um, units here by my 38 pi. So it will be 12 times 60 times 2 pi times 12 over 38 pi. And now it's radians per minute. I'm sorry about that. But we all do it, and that's the thing to check. If you get it wrong, check your units and see if you made a silly mistake like I did. All right, so now let's go back to this one where we had the 12 feet per second, 60 seconds in a minute. Remember, our goal is to get revolutions per minute. So the next thing, we need to look at the number of feet in a revolution. So one revolution is 38 pi, but inches, let me do it correctly this time, and then we have 12 inches in a foot. Let's see, did I get it? Seconds, seconds, minutes are there, inches, inches, feet, Feet, and I'm looking for revolutions per minute that ought to do it so 12 times 60 times 12 over 38 pi and that is revolutions per minute so aside from my little bit of confusion here um, when I had the wrong unit um, I hope that you see that when you do the angular and linear speed, the formula that they give you in your textbook is not near as important as understanding what you are trying to do. You are always trying to just get the conversion to work. So if we go back even to the very beginning, everything that we did, we started with whatever speed or whatever rate, whatever they gave us at the beginning, and then we just worked to get to the end result by converting. I hope you find this helpful.